Should Here. they have had a lengthier process, or was that not necessary because they knew it was Gerard and just go with Gerard? The interview process for Gerard Mayo has extended back since 2008. So if you have a candidate that you're extremely comfortable with in terms of acumen, in terms of football knowledge, in terms of tenor that you're going to bring to the organization, well, then bringing in flavor of the week, Ben Johnson, it's, a, you know, it's a dog and pony show in that regard. But... All that said, you should have the latitude to bring in a Mike Vrabel, perhaps, if you have the opportunity to, even if you're going to arrive back at Gerard Mayo. But to me, this is as much about changing the tenor of the organization as it is changing the X's and O's in the football. So if you love the DNA of everything you've been about for two-plus decades, then this isn't retreading something when you're in the, you know, you're bringing somebody back in this organization to do something in a different manner. Well, and while he has similar DNA, right? He's a Patriots guy. He's been under Bill Belichick for the vast majority of his professional life. But this will be a change. This will be a change in the tenor. It's a word you use, Tom. I think the word culture gets thrown a lot around a lot. And I'm not sure how many people can define it. I think the easiest definition is what you allow to happen in an organization. And I think that will change under Gerard Mayo. And the way I look at it is, while on the one hand, I understand you bring in these bright minds that are around the NFL, you try to pluck ideas from them and maybe you apply them, move them forward. Or maybe those relationships blossom down the road when you're looking for somebody else to help your organization in some other capacity. I get that. I think the crafts felt as though it would have been a waste of everyone's time. Their time, the candidate's time, Gerard Mayo's time, because they knew who they wanted to hire, and so they opted not to go through that process. But how do, how do they even know? I mean, they haven't <coughs> done a coaching search, like, in, in 25 years. They don't know what they don't know. So what's the harm? Even if, you th even if they, were, they, they were like, you know, Gerard's our guy. They had it in, in his contract, um, you know, really another year from now was when it was ideal. What does it hurt to bring in some people, especially Mike Vrabel, to hear about his experiences? And, he was and just where, here, wasn't he? He was just here. They could have talked to him. Well, yes, but you understand <laughs> what I'm saying. Like, yes. yeah. you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it, it could it. be anybody. Right. It could be, you know, Brian Flores. It could be, you know, whoever. But w what's the harm? There is no in, harm. In, in talking to these people, and it might, it might trigger something, give you a thought that makes the Patriots better, that makes Gerard Mayo better down the road. Instead, this looks completely closed off. We're the smartest people in the room. Uh, it, this looks to me like the crafts are asserting that, hey, don't forget about us and who's responsible for all the success of this organization because I think, look, they're two for two in Hall of Fame coaches so far. This could be three for three. If it turns out that Gerard Mayo is the guy, now all of a sudden the crafts get a lot more credit for what's gone on here over the last 20 years. Yeah, the one thing that gave me pause too today, I was watching uh, Zolak and Bertrand this morning and they had Ryan Johnson on and I'd forgotten that this had happened. But when Bill Cowher retired from the Pittsburgh Steelers, mm -hmm. they had their sights set. They thought it was going to be Ken Wisenhunt, who at the time was their offensive coordinator, but they opened up a search, the Roonies did, and Mike Tomlin came in and blew the doors away and they were like, huh. And they changed their mind. Like, I just think that maybe somebody else could have come walk the door and made them and at least made them take pause and maybe circle back with Gerard and see how he would answer some of those things as opposed to just saying, you've been here for a long time. Here's the job. And again, not to say that he doesn't deserve it. It boils just, down to it, this. It feels very quick. I, yeah, it boils down to the simple fact that they contractually decided that they wanted to have Gerard ultimately replace Bill Belichick. They didn't want to lose him. So as a result... When he was rebuffing interviews to have head coaching opportunities last year, in order to have him stick around or to rebuff those, they put into his contract that he would succeed Bill. Greg's exactly right. This is a year earlier than anyone anticipated because nobody bet on 4-13. and 13. Ideally, they would have had Bill break the record, he leaves, Gerard takes over. But now, because they were contractually committed, they said, do we stick with this or do we move to an open search and take our chances? Then we look like we don't know what in God's name we're doing to a degree. Well, and I do think it's worth pointing out that they, they were afraid of losing him. That, that's what last year's statement was about. That was what preventing him from going on interviews was about. And if they didn't lose him last offseason, maybe it would have been this offseason. And Gerard Mayo was open to taking his career elsewhere. It's part of the reason he's still linebackers coach and not defensive coordinator or co-defensive coordinator or assistant head. It's because it allowed him the freedom 
to take a promotion elsewhere if he felt as though his career was not going to grow here. But I, I didn't like the timing of it. These other examples that people have used, um, Mike Holborn with Jim Moore. Jim Moore had a head coaching offer on the table. They got him to pull it back. Uh, there was uh, one other example where it was the same sort of thing, where they had a head coaching opportunity and they took it off the table. What the craft should have done was say, Gerard, go, you know, go get your experience, go talk to people. If you get a head coach offer, okay, then I see it. But they didn't do that. He didn't even interview. He didn't get to that point. And so I just think it was way premature. And look, even if, say, like, because we're talking about Bill, like, okay, maybe it was a year from now. Maybe it might have been another year from now if Bill was close to the record, if the th things were trending upward. It could have been two years down the road. Mm -hmm. What's the sense of Gerard going out there? What if he does d get a defensive coordinator job someplace else, learn something different, but the Crafts say, hey, when Bill retires, you're our guy, but go get experience. They could have done it you're that way. You're just assuming, though. You're assuming that the, the guy on the other side of the table is willing to do whatever you want him to do. And I'm not sure that. I mean, it sure case. seems like he's willing to do what they want to do after what's well, just happened he, in because the because past few years. That's how negotiations work. That's how negotiations work. And, and they offered him something that he wanted a year before it was going to happen. And he jumped at the opportunity. Pre prematurely, in my opinion. They should have waited for a head coach offer and then do it just like That's the rest of these. That's absolutely fair. Uh, well, 53, I think. 54% yeah, of the people agree with Phil and Tom.